I'm David, I'm a PhD student from Tel Aviv University. And today I'm going to talk about a relocatable Adelson model for symbolic execution, uh, which is a joint work with uh, Noam Brineski. In this talk, I'm going to tackle two known challenges in symbolic execution. The first one is F explosion due to symbolic point in the reference. And the second one is uh, constraint solving of error theory constraints. And I'm going to address these two challenges using a new relocatable Adelson model. First challenge, which relates to symbolic pointers. First, let's see using this example how symbolic pointers are generated. We start execution with this allocation of the array of tables, and then we have this initialization loop where in the first iteration we allocate the table of pointers T1, and in the second iteration we allocate another table T2. Now, when we reach uh, this branch where uh, we access the first table with the symbolic offset i, the reference pointer will be this uh, symbolic expression, which in this case points only to the first table T1. And then the accessed uh, value will be encoded using this uh, select expression over the SMT array of T1. Next, when we access with the symbolic of the J, the reference pointer will be this symbolic expression, which in this case points to two objects uh, marked in red. So the question now is how to encode the access to value in such cases. We have several approaches for handling symbolic pointers. We have the forked model used in vanilla Klee. We have the merged model used in Sage and Anger. And we also have the segmented memory model. In this model, we use static point analysis to partition the memory into segments such that every pointer is guaranteed to point to at most one segment. In this way, we can avoid the forks when we access uh, symbolic pointers. This approach has some limitations. It's based on static point analysis, which can be imprecise, which may result in segments that contain many redundant objects. And then the error theory constraints might become more complex. In our example, the four red objects are allocated in the same line, so point analysis can distinguish between them, and they will be mapped to the same segment. So back to our example, uh, this symbolic pointer now will point only to one object, our segment, so we indeed can avoid the forks. But as you can see, this segment contains two redundant objects, which are not pointed by our symbolic pointer, M05 and M06. Our goal is to create the segments on the fly. The problem is that it's currently not supported with the address in model. If we want to relocate an object to another address, then we need to update all its references in the memory, which requires precise type information, which is not always available. We propose a new model where the base addresses are symbolic values instead of concrete values. And we maintain an additional set of address constraints which help to preserve the non-overlapping property of the address space. In our example, when we reach this point in the execution, the memory will look like this. So as you can see, the pointer values are now symbolic values. For example, the first element of the tables array is now alpha one, which is a symbolic base address of the first table T1. And below we have our address constraints, which is a set of equalities, where the left side is a symbolic base address and the right side is the concrete address. Now let's see how we can use our model to implement a dynamic version of the segmented memory model. Going back to our example, we had this symbolic pointer which points to MO3 and MO4, which now have the symbolic base addresses alpha3 and alpha4. First, we create a new segment with a symbolic base address alpha5. We copy the contents of the two objects to the new segment. We deallocate MO3 and MO4. And finally, we update our address constraints. So now alpha3 and alpha4 point into locations in our new segment. Now, when we resolve again our symbolic pointer, it will point only to one object, the new segment. 
so we can indeed avoid the forks. And we also get a smaller segment, which doesn't contain the redundant objects that we had in the original approach. In the first challenge, we saw how we can use our model to merge objects. But actually, we can also do the opposite operation, which is splitting objects. Now I'll try to explain why this can be useful. Solving area theory constraints is known to be expensive, especially when we have big arrays with many store expressions. Let's say we have this symbolic pointer P, which points to M01. So if M01 is a big object, then the accessed value will be this select expression over the big SMT array of M01. So what we can do in this case is relocate the original object M01 and split it to smaller objects. Now, when we resolve again our symbolic pointer P, it may point, for example, to M02 and M03, which means that we have more symbolic states and more forks. But on the other side, we get uh, smaller objects, which come with smaller SMT arrays. We evaluate our model in the context of the merging and splitting operations. So let's start with the merging. Here we compare the sizes of the created segments with the two approaches. We have SMM, the original segmented memory model, and we have DSMM, our dynamic version of SMM. As you can see with our approach DSMM, the segments are indeed much smaller. Now let's get to the actual performance. So we have SMM and DSMM as before, and we also have FMM, the fork in memory model, used in vanilla CLI. We run every program with a timeout of 24 hours and check the termination time and the memory usage. Here you can see the termination times with each of the models. As you can see, the fork in the model was slower compared to this MM in all the cases except for SQLite. And when we compare between the two segmented models, SMM and DSMM, then you can see that DSMM was faster in all the cases except for APR. So in general, DSMM spends more time on resolving symbolic pointers, as it first needs to find all the pointed objects, and only then it creates the segment. While SMM, every pointer is already guaranteed to point only to one segment. So in APR, it was indeed the case where the resolve time was high with DSMM, which eventually resulted in better performance with SMM. In terms of memory usage, there is no huge difference between SMM and DSMM. But in M4, for example, you can see that the memory usage with FMM was much higher compared to SMM and DSMM mainly because of the path explosion that comes from symbolic pointer dereference. In the evaluation of the splitting operation, we choose a simple heuristic which splits an object to smaller objects of size n. We experiment with several values for n and check the termination time with respect to vanilla CLI. In the evaluation, we observe two main patterns. For example, in make, the best results were obtained where n is roughly equals to 200. And when we increase further the value of n, we get less speed up. In SQLite, the best result was obtained for a small value of n. And when we increase the value of n, we also get less speed up. A couple of words about applications and future work. Another application of our model relates to query caching. The expression representation with our model can actually help to match between queries that contain address values, which then can be used to accelerate and improve the query caching mechanism. For more information, you can have a look at this ICST paper. Now a bit about future work. So we can try to better predict when a merging or splitting operation is likely to be beneficial. And we can also think of a hybrid segmented memory model 
where we run the point analysis on the fly instead of doing it ahead of time, and then use our model to partition the memory into segments. Our code is available on GitHub, and I'll be happy to take questions.